So you want to get rich, huh? That bank account is looking a bit empty, isn't it? Let's fix that with a little programming magic. All you have to do is go to your bank account, right click, select inspect element and change the amount of money you have. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, we're officially rich. It's that easy. I'll see you all in the next video. All right, all right, enough jokes. You want to get rich from programming, which means you're different from other people. You don't want a regular job. You're a hustler. You want to break the system, escape the matrix. Well, don't worry, buddy. In this video, I'm going to show you how to program apps that actually make money. I'm going to guide you through the process of how to get an idea, how to code it, and how to market it. Trust me, I'm an expert at this. Disclaimer, this person is an unemployed loser. He has no experience whatsoever. Viewer discretion is advised. That was weird. So the app idea. Let's get one thing straight. Our goal here is to get rich, not build the next billion dollar company. All we need to do is create a project that pays your rent and your random DoorDash orders. This makes our job 10 times easier because now we don't have to build some project that'll solve a problem for humanity. We just have to build a project that fuels our greed. Okay, this is starting to sound a bit unethical. Maybe we should do something. Oh, money. Now that we've sold our soul to capitalism, we can use my secret business strategies for project ideas. <laughs> this looks like a pyramid. Wait a minute. Strategy number one, solve a problem so small, so stupidly specific that nobody else bothers. Let me give you a beautiful example. I have a problem and I assume other people have the same problem. I get a lot of emails, promotions, alerts, reminders, and of course, emails from people who reply to my newsletter, Sloth Bites. Oh, you don't know what Sloth Bites is? <laughs> Sloth Bites is my weekly newsletter where I share bite-sized programming information every week to make you a better programmer. And the best part about it, it's free. All you have to do is give me your email. I won't do anything with it. I promise. <laughs> so yeah, my emails get a lot of stuff and I'm too lazy to categorize them. So you can make a project that categorizes emails and I bet you could charge $5 a month for this. Get 1000 users and bam, $5,000 a month. Wait, this already exists? Oh. Strategy number two, solve a problem so big and common that it doesn't matter if another one exists. Look, maybe the email thing has already been done, but that doesn't mean it won't work. Think about it. Calendar apps, password managers, note taking apps, to do apps. There's like 500 of them, but guess what? They still make that money. Your idea doesn't doesn't have to be good or original. That's right. In fact, you can even just copy and paste someone else's idea. Big companies are a master of this. Check this out. DoorDash, Uber Eats, Grubhub, Rappi. Holy, there's a lot of food delivery apps. Strategy number three, the X for Y formula. Look, since we can copy businesses, we can use this classic strategy to make it look like we're doing something original. The strategy is pretty simple. The X is the specific problem or need that you're trying to solve. And then the Y is the specific group of people or market that you're trying to sell to. So imagine something like the Discord for businesses. Linux, but for normal people. Uber Eats, but you take people. Wait, that's just Uber. Look, it's a simple strategy. I obviously don't have any good ideas or else I'd be rich. But you get the point, right? This strategy is really effective if you have absolutely no creative. Strategy number four, the GPT wrapper. This is a brand new strategy thanks to ChatGPT and other AIs. And the strategy is pretty simple. You make AI do a specific task. Yeah, it's that simple. And some people have made millions off this, like my homie Blake Anderson right here. You know what he made? Riz GPT, GPT for dating. He made millions off this. Yeah, millions. Business is such a beautiful thing. <laughs> now, even if you have an idea, thanks to my four strategies, it doesn't really matter if you don't know how to build it. So let me show you how to start building these apps. You see, most developers have problems here. They get stuck and it's not because they can't build it. In fact, it's the opposite. They can build it, but they want everything to be perfect. They want to keep adding features. They're worried about scaling. Bro, you have zero users. What's the point of scaling? Because while you're worried about clean code, scalability and best practices, someone else is launching their broken app, getting real users and making money with code that looks like it was written by a three-year-old. But thanks to modern tools, shipping garbage has never been easier. But I'll get to that part later. When you're building your project, it should follow these three rules. S, L, C. Simple, lovable, and complete. I stole this from a video from Edmund Young, but I just love the advice so much, so I'm going to steal it here. I'm sorry, Edmund. It's such good advice. Simple means that your app doesn't have to do everything, but it should at least deliver at least one to two key features. Lovable means you want people to use your app. So this just means your app should have some good UI UX. So basically, make your app look good. I'll talk more about that later. And your app should be complete. Don't make your app like the gaming industry where it's incomplete and then sell you it later. Make sure it's functional. Make sure the one to two key features you did make work. Once again, I'm taking this from Edmund. So go check out his videos later. Not now. You should watch mine first. Now I want to emphasize the L and SLC lovable because I don't think enough of you understand how important this part is, especially the programmers, specifically backend engineers. I'm looking at you. Please make your project look good or at least not terrible. It's bad enough that you're ugly. Don't make your project ugly too. <laughs>
most of you probably only care about the programming part. You want to get things done, even if it looks ugly. And I respect that, but you're trying to sell this project to other people. Here's the thing about us humans. We're shallow, very shallow. You could have the best code ever written, revolutionary features, but if it looks ugly, nobody's going to use it. I mean, there's exceptions, of course, like Craigslist and uh, Craigslist. But imagine if Craigslist just looked a little better. Design is really important. Now, you could spend years learning design, studying UI patterns, taking screenshots of every app to learn how to make a good looking website, or you could use this tool to help you out, Mobbin. Now, what's Mobbin? Mobbin's a really useful tool for design, and I'm so happy a platform like this exists. You can think of them like the paparazzi for design because they take pictures of everything. <laughs> Mobbin, don't get mad at that. And they're also the sponsor of today's video. I knew it. It's a platform that lets you look at websites and mobile apps to get some design inspiration and see how other applications do things. Let me give you some quick facts about Mobbin that'll blow you away. They have over 1,200 apps, over 500,000 screenshots, and over 80,000 user flows. Yeah, it's a cheat code for design. It's updated every single week, and their mission is to empower the world to design great digital experiences. So basically, Mobbin wants to make every website and app look good. You can check out how other companies do signups, logins, their homepage, dashboards, checkouts, really anything. A lot of designers rely on Mobbin as a source of inspiration and best practices because, well, they have everything. I mean, look how easy this is. I need a landing page. I go on Mobbin. Boom, this is how 500 apps did their landing page. It's quick and easy to find exactly what you need. No more random screenshots. No more guessing what works. Mobbin already has everything for you. And you might even learn a thing or two about UI UX. So if you'd like to try Mobbin for free and start making beautiful projects, click the link in the description. Now that we have our design cheat code and I sold my soul a bit, let's get a bit more technical and start building. Your application is going to need four parts. Front end, the back end, database, and a payment processor. And when people think of these four steps, they usually have to think of a tech stack. Ah, uh, yes, the tech stack. A landmine full of opinions. Now, when it comes to tech stack specifically to make money, your tech stack doesn't really matter. The only people that care about your tech stack are tech bros on Twitter. It's X now. I'm not saying that. And they're not going to buy your product. They're going to build it themselves. So you could honestly use whatever you want. WordPress, Scratch, JavaScript, Python. You could write your app in COBOL for all I care. The only thing that matters is if your app works. The only recommendations I will give you about a tech stack is use something that's popular, that has a lot of developer support, has a large community, and that you're the most comfortable with. At the end of the day, if you can't get any work done, what's the point? Now, what I like to use personally, and this is specifically for web development, I like to use Next.js and Superbase, and I like to style my apps with ShatCN and Tailwind. I love ShatCN. And then I like to use PostHog for analytics to track you all. <laughs> and then I use Stripe for payment processing so I can take all your money. Yeah, that's the tech stack I like to use right now. This could change in the future because there's a lot of tools and frameworks out there that I haven't used personally, but this does get the job done. It's up to you if you want to use it. AI tools. Ah, remember when I said shipping garbage has never been easier? This is what I meant. Now, AI is not perfect and people have mixed opinions about it for programming. My advice would be if the goal of this project is to learn, I don't recommend using it. But in our case, it's to sell out and make money. So who cares? Now, obviously, AI is imperfect. It's not going to give you the entire project yet. But I will say it's very helpful to get stuff done fast, specifically annoying stuff. AI is a very helpful tool, no matter how you look at it. Now, there's levels to how you can use AI. We got the normie level, which is just the basic AI chats like ChatGPT, Claude, Gemini. Does anyone actually use the Gemini chat? <laughs> and then we have the try hard sweat level, which are using tools that are specifically made for coding. There's tools like Bolt, V0, and <laughs> Lovable that basically build the full stack application. They obviously can't build the entire thing, but they do give a good starting point. I mean, check this out. I'll use Bolt for this. You give a description of what you want and Bolt just builds it for you. Oh my God. Uh. There's also AI code editors like Cursor, Windsurf, and Pear. Shout out Ning. AI inside your code editors might become the norm soon, at least for non-enterprise projects, because they're really helpful. It's great. You should check out one of these AI code editors. But uh, where was I? All right. How to make projects that make money. You now have your app idea that'll make you millions. All you have to do now is build it. Let me give you the ultimate workflow so you can finish that app in a week. Step one, get a description and outline of the project. Go to ChatGPT, describe the project you want to make, and tell ChatGPT to create a detailed and structured explanation of the app because you don't even know what you're building yourself yet. Step two, use an AI tool like V0, Bolt, or Lovable and copy and paste that detailed explanation to one of those tools. It'll start building it for you and give you a good starting point. Step three, fix the UI. These tools are most likely going to generate terrible UI. So what you can do now is go onto Mobbin, 
Mobbin and look at any designs that you think look good, copy the images from Mobbin and paste them into the tool that you use to build the app and tell it to make it look like that. Step four, start programming it yourself. Even though you have a starting point, these tools are not going to build the whole thing for you. You actually have to use your brain and code it yourself. So yoink the code that it gave you and start coding. And there you go, my friend. You now have a starting point to making your next million dollar application. Now that you finished the project, all you have to do now is wait and the users will start coming. Where's the user marketing? Now, even though you finished building your project, you'd think people would just visit it normally. Well, you're wrong. Even once you finish building your project and you publish it to the internet, literally nothing happens. Absolutely nothing. Nobody knows it exists. Nobody's going to use it. Your mom's not going to use it. Your dad's not going to use it. Your uncle's not going to use it. Your grandma's not going to use it. Your project goes straight to the void of the internet, which is why we need marketing. All you need to do is be slightly annoying, kind of everywhere, and a little bit cringe. And there's already a place that does exactly that. Social media. Woo! Reddit, free users, Twitter, free marketing, LinkedIn, free customers. You have to start thinking like a business person. You got to stop thinking about people as people. You have to start looking at them as numbers and money. <laughs> Go on LinkedIn and post about your entrepreneurship journey and link your project and people are going to eat that stuff up. It's that simple nowadays. Go on TikTok, post some cringe TikToks about your product and people are bound to see it. Go on YouTube, post some terrible videos about your product. People are bound to see it. Even if your video gets a little views, you could just buy ads and people will have to see it because you paid for it. So keep posting about your project, keep being annoying and people will eventually try it. Now combine social media marketing with SEO, search engine optimization, fix up your HTML and add some data to your project, get your project to the top of Google searches, you already know what I'm going to say. People are bound to see it. And if your product actually is good, it'll get popular and people will actually buy it. And you'll finally be rich and live your dream life. And if you successfully get rich from this video, split me the check because you owe me. I made you.